Hello everyone, this is just a brief overview of Lesson 2 from your Database Administration Fundamentals training and this is over creating database objects. Throughout this lesson, uh, as you read your training manual there, you will see that we will go over the following objectives here. We will be defining the various data types used. And through that you will learn how to choose the proper data types for both the type of data you want to store as well as managing your database size. We will also be creating and using tables. I will do, be doing that part in the W3 Schools activities. Creating views and what views are, how those relate to a table, as well as creating stored procedures which is just a previously written SQL statement which has been stored or saved into your database. So let's go ahead and start by talking about data types and what exactly is a data type. A data type is just an attribute that specifies the type of data that an object can hold and it also specifies how many bytes each data type will take up in your database. So data types specify the possible range of values of the set the operations that can be performed on the values, and the way in which the values are stored in memory. Now as a general rule, if you have similar data types to choose from, but they only differ in byte size, use that data type that has a larger range of values and or has an increased precision. Now if we take a look here at uh, SQL Server 2008's built-in data types, I can see the different categories that they're arranged by exact numbers, approximate numbers, date and time, character strings, Unicode character strings, binary strings, other data types, CLR data types, and spatial data types. Now exact number data types such as int and tinyint are the most common SQL Server data types used to store numeric information in databases. Now SQL Server as you can see includes a wide range of those predefined data types and those are called built-in data types but most databases that you create or use will only need to use you know basic data types so you'll get very familiar with those common data types. Now if we look at approximate numbers or approximate numerics this includes precision which is the total number of decimal digits that can be stored either to the left or to the right of the decimal point. Now when it comes to precision um, the value must be a at a minimum of 1 and could be a maximum of 38. The default precision number is 18 so you might want to re uh, remember that in case you go for the certification exam that you might see that example or that question as to what is the default precision number and once again that is 18. So when it comes to the approximate numerics uh, data types you'll see for this are float and real. Next if you look at date and time those would be like date, date time 2, date time, date time offset, as well as time. If we look at character strings, uh, these are used all the time. These are ones you've definitely become familiar with, and that's char, which represents character, or var char, and you also have the ability to use text. Now with char, this is a fixed length non-unicode string data where n is going to defy the length or the string length that you'll be using. With varchar, this is variable length, so it's not fixed like char. So this is variable length non-unicode string data type that indicates the actual storage size of the data that you will be putting in there, or that will be stored. We also have unicode character strings such as nchar, ntext, nvarchar. As I said, we have binary strings, such those could be binary, variable binary or var binary as well as image. Other data types could include cursor, timestamp, table, uh, large valued data types such as var char max, in var char max, uh, large object data types such as text, in text, image. So just some of the, you know, a variety of the different types of built-in data types that are you're going to see throughout your use of SQL Server as well as as they carry over into other databases. Some of the more popular ones I've already talked about um, but will include a money. This obviously is where you will store money or different types of currency values. Float. This is commonly used in sci the scientific community and is considered an approximation or approximate number data type. 
I mentioned date time a little bit ago, and that's used to store date and time values in one of many different formats that are available to you. Uh, Boolean data types or bit data types. This is where integers can have a null or a zero value, false, or a true value of one. So as we know, everything's in um, bits and binary, so it's either zero, one, true, or false. And then I mentioned date time offset. This is a date combined with the time of day that has time zone awareness. So date time offset might be another one of those data types that you find yourself using because it is a date combined with the time of the day. Now I mentioned earlier that it's necessary to understand your data types not only for the type of matching it with the type of data you will be using in your databases but also on managing the size of your database. And when you can manage the storage size of the data types this will help in your overall database. Uh, you know we've mentioned before that your database now is typically only as uh, limitation is that of the amount of physical storage space you have so it's not as um, important as it was you know even 10 years ago but we do need to look at that just to be uh, doing a better job or, of managing our database as the database administrator. Uh, you can see these sizes I've included here um, storage size for a bit is one byte where if we go up to like if we're going to be storing those monetary values or currency values then those can go up to eight bytes that are set aside just for that data type. So it's important to look at these and get a good feel so that if you are asked that question you know what type of if I'm using data type small money what is my storage size that's set for that and then you would just automatically know that that's small money so get very comfortable learning those. Now I want to talk a little bit about implicit and explicit conversions. Now SQL supports both the implicit conversions which occur without specifying an actual callout function such as cast or convert and it also we want to talk about explicit conversions which actually require you to use the functions cast or convert specifically. And what this means is that Implicit data conversions occur when the SQL Server Expression con Evaluator automatically converts data from one data type to another to complete an operation like a comparison of two values. Now, explicit data type conversion requires the use of convert or the cast function to convert data types from one data type to another before an operation like a comparison can actually be completed. Now, it's key to remember here that not all data type conversions are supported, such as uh, NCHAR cannot be converted to an image data type. Use convert instead of cast to take advantage of the style functionality. Now use cast instead of convert to adhere to ISO or ISO, okay? Um, implicit and explicit conversions just get a good feel of how one works um, when you are going to use the function of convert or the cast function you know that that's explicit data type and so that's going to be you're going to convert that data before any type of operation such as a comparison will be completed where implicit will try to do that automatically 